Nim. Nim. And so you have a channel called Nim TV, right? Yes. And so we actually did an episode of your Nim cast on the original Star Wars trilogy. Now we're going to talk about the prequels over on our channel on the, the mm-hmm. podcast. Um, but can you explain, cause you usually tell me what it's Nimage Nib is what you go by. Why, why is Nim- that? Um, it's my real name backwards. Gotcha. And that, makes, is, that makes a lot more sense to me now because I was like, I don't know what this means anytime I had seen it before. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, basically I've done all my, like, branding around the word NIM. Yeah. So, again, like I, I said, the, the series was, like, the NIM cast. And then I actually... Believe it or not, started out uh, my channel as a Minecraft uh, Let's Play channel. Okay. <laughs> um, it's pretty rare. There's not was, a lot of those. Oh, there's totally not a million of them. <laughs> uh, and it was called Nimcraft, actually, okay. originally. And then I, when I switched to, to doing movie stuff, I switched it to Nim TV. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so. Well. So we we talked about the original trilogy, which you can go over to his channel and check out. Um, yeah. We're going to talk about the prequels. And what I was thinking is I will tell you what I think the prequel should have been and would be better. You can tell me either why I'm wrong or what you think is good about the prequels. Okay. So I now think... I'm, I am... Go- okay. I, 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 go ahead. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, okay. I, I'll, I'll go. Um, I am going to note, though, that I do not love the prequels. The only one that I consider to be a at least somewhat good movie is Episode 3. Um, the other two, I think, are... I, I enjoy them, watching them, for various reasons, but I don't think they're good movies at all. Yeah. Anyways, go on. So, <laughs> I think that the original or the, the prequel trilogy should be condensed down into one movie... Which is 75% episode three and, you know, maybe 20% episode two and 5% episode one. And instead of focusing on Anakin, focus on Obi-Wan, which is clearly what they wanted to do. Like Obi-Wan was the most compelling character throughout until Anakin switched. It should have been Obi-Wan's story with Anakin as a subplot. And one movie, shorten it down. You don't need to do a trilogy. Trilogies, trilogies just convolute everything and you end up with, you know, these long scenes of Senate meetings that nobody cares about and all these extra characters and battles that don't seem to have any benefit to anything and have Darth Maul still kill Qui-Gon Jinn, but, you know, continue throughout the whole, the whole series. If you're going to stick with trilogies, he needs to stay throughout. He should not die. Definitely. In the beginning, of the yeah, first one. that was the, probably the biggest mistake that they made uh, in that first movie. Well, not the biggest, but there's a lot of big mistakes they made. There's a. Have you ever um, seen the belated media? What if episode one was good? He's got. Yes. He's got three parts. He does a great job of breaking all that down, and I think his yeah, version really good. of the prequels is probably the ideal version of what the prequel should be. Yeah. There, I think there's a lot that could have done. I don't agree with making it into one movie. I mean. I feel like, cause like, okay, here's the, the thing is for me, yep. I think episode three felt, um, like it was trying to do too much in one movie because, okay, because like the, the, it was trying to go through all of the character development that should have been going to on in the previous two movies, but wasn't. Mm. And so it felt like it was going through too much, which is why it felt like, Anakin's switch was way too quick for some people. It felt like it was too abrupt or whatever, which is which why is I think ironic it should be. Because that's what you've been waiting for for your, uh, the first two movies. Yeah. And right, those feel the so first... slow. So if you watch all three back to back, that switch doesn't feel late or quick. It feels so late. Like it feels like it took forever to get to. Yeah. That's the problem is it's, 
they should have been developing it more in the previous two movies and they didn't do a lot with that. And I think that's one of the biggest issues. Like the first one, like he's just a kid learning about the force for the first time. And you're, he's just, he's just, he's just this random kid and you you don't really get much with him. Then the next movie, they're trying to do this kind of somewhat dark side thing, especially with him, like killing the Tusken Raiders and all that. But it, just doesn't come across the right way and they have the creepy romance with Padme which just messes it all up. Well it's creepy um, in the light of the first one. Again, that's yeah. it's another thing that So if the similar yeah. to um Luke and Leia kissing in the second movie, Anakin being so young and such a baby character in the very first one Going into being a man and Padme not changing. Like, yeah, so, okay, so Anakin that was grows by 15 years and yeah. Padme looks maybe two months older. Like, it, it doesn't, it, yeah. the consistency it's, is very jarring. Yeah, so that's one thing I would also agree with is the first movie should not have had Anakin as a 10 year old boy. No. Um, because cause the problem with that is then you suddenly switch actors for the next movie and then it doesn't feel like it's the same character. Because it's like you just suddenly, oh, it's a different actor. So it feels like a completely different character. Um, so it kind of disjoints it and which kind of messes up the whole character. Any, any sort of, uh, you know, I don't know, just kind of messes up any sort of attachment you might want the audience to have with the character. Now, I don't think there's a lot of attachment to that character anyways, because it was poorly done anyways, but I think it would have been more effective if they had kept the same actor throughout movies, which is why he shouldn't have started off as uh, a boy. Yeah. Well, they I, um, they spent way too much time on Tatooine. They spent way too much time on the pod yeah. racing. Like, all that extra pod stuff. Race- it's It's yeah. fine. Like, it's a cool thing in a bad movie, but it's not a good thing of a, any great movie. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it, it's such a, uh, divergent of, or, uh, it's such a distraction from the story. Like, yeah. How, how much time did they invest That's- into that? How much time did they invest in a Naboo? How much time did they invest in the Sin meetings? The only cool parts is the fight with Darth Maul in the first movie. Yeah. Okay. That, that, battle was genuinely well done overall i think like there was even even not just with just the choreography and everything i think in general that battle was well done well obviously the music that goes without saying um but um also i think the actors just their facial expressions felt more i don't know they everything in that that battle scene just felt like the acting was in general just better in the than the rest of the movie. I don't know why. I don't know. Well, it was the. I mean, yeah. Ewan McGregor is a great actor. Uh, Liam Neeson. <laughs> Liam Neeson is you know a yeah. pretty good actor. Like it's harder yeah. to say that now after Taken Thirty Five is coming out. But like because <laughs> he, he kind of seems right. like he hits the same note. But you know, doing Qui Gon Jinn, he felt very stoic, very controlled. Like, he felt like a good Jedi master, right? And Which, the the way they did that fight scene, I think, really played well to all three of the characters, you know, including Darth Maul. Yeah, like, definitely. The The only thing I, I would change is a lot less CGI jumping. That got pretty old. Yeah. Not nearly as bad as the second one. The second one is awful. Yeah. But in the first one, oh, yeah. the jumping doesn't doesn't really fit especially when you compare it if you if you watch the prequel trilogy into the the original trilogy it is so uh jarring how different the force and the force abilities and the what you can do with the force like it, it doesn't the consistency gets completely lost they should now, have, they should have toned it way down and made it more consistent now here's an interesting thing though is the way i see it is the the fact that the they seem to be more powerful with the force or whatever in that time might be like the way i always saw it is because okay this is during the prime of the jedi order when all the jedi have been training for many years and so this is like the prime of 
like the Jedi Order. So it kind of makes sense to me. I don't know. It in that sense. Okay, you have to really sell that in the movie if that's what you want to go with. That that is true. That and is then true. They also jumping doesn't seem to be like Luke lifts his um his X wing out of the the swamp. Right, jumping yeah. seems much easier to do than that. So when you have Obi Wan jumping, you know, twenty five feet up onto a platform doing triple backflips oh, yeah. and all that type of stuff. Then you have Obi-Wan tapping lightsabers with Darth Vader in a new hope. Yeah. It's like, okay, this is what, what, what happened? Oh right? yeah. 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 That, that is, that is true. Uh, that is definitely, definitely and then true. Even going into, I- even going into the newer movies, the last Jedi and the force awakens other than princess Leia flying around like Superman, there's not, there's, yeah, there's not the same type of acrobatics and like the, the fighting styles are much more grounded and much more realistic, which is, which is better. Like, I'm not saying this is yeah, wrong. I, like, I think the prequel should yeah. have toned it way down and it would have been Definitely. much interesting, which, more interesting. I think, I think that's why I like the lightsaber battle from episode one the most is because I think that one was the most toned down out of all of them. Like that one felt not um, too bad, other than some of the jumps. But like the actual choreography felt kind of realistic. Well, they did it. But where, that's the other thing. Uh, yeah, anytime like, they use CGI, CGI characters, just cut that out completely, and it's a great fight scene. Yeah, the, I, I don't think they actually used. Um, but yeah, yeah, and then like also, so the jumping course, stuff. The, those were the CGI characters, is what my point. I don't. Were the, was the jumping in that CGI characters or was it like on wires? I'm pretty sure it was CGI, but maybe it was on wires. Any, anyway, it, even know, if it is know, wires. Because I know in episode two and episode three, the jumping parts are CGI characters. Yeah. But I thought that in the in episode one, because I know episode one uses more practical effects than two and three do. Yeah. Um. Well, two, they were trying to... Two was like an experimental movie, basically. Like they've rendered the entire movie. Yeah. Was all, oh, almost yeah. all in CGI. And yeah, that's cool. But that, Which that's would- something that should be done for a movie like 300, where it's like a standalone, you know, or a Valkyrie or these other type of movies that are standalone things that or- can, you know, uh, Avatar, something like that, right? Like, yeah, that well, that are that are more experimental. That the yeah, point you is to experiment. You don't add it into a a, a series that yeah. hasn't done that before. Now, now, one thing though about that is is George Lucas in the original Star Wars. George Lucas has always tried to in his movies try to push the boundaries of special effects, which he did very well. And obviously in the original star Wars. Um, and I think that's what he was going for with these new ones. It was like, uh, especially, you know, with adding all this CGI, you know, the first ever like CGI character was Jar Jar or whatever or something, you know, so he's trying to push all these boundaries, but it just doesn't work as well. I don't think well, it doesn't work when you put it into a franchise. It doesn't work when that's not already yeah. established. I think it would have yeah, been see, cool if he would have made something completely new with that idea. But you can't, yeah. you can't just totally change the style of your movie yeah. Yeah, because that's, you, you want to try something new. Yeah, that's probably one of the biggest issues uh, with them is the, they don't feel like the same franchise is, which is an issue definitely. Um, but no, um, because it's it's yeah. it's thirty years, right? Yeah, maybe it's, less than fifty. Yeah, it's thir- thir- twenty twenty in between the prequels and the original. Or no, yeah. So from wait, wait, wait. Uh, from uh, Phantom Menace to A New Hope is somewhere between twenty and fifty years. Um, but well, let's see. Between well, I know that. Let me think. Between those two, it's probably like. 35 because see i know i know the exact timelines of how much is between each one yeah um because i'm a star wars nerd like because i know between episode three and episode four it's supposed to be wait 
Oh, you, wait, you're talking about like chronologically with the movies, right? Like in yeah, the, not the not from when they made yeah, the movie, but yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I'm just I'm just making sure making sure we're on the same page because that's what I was talking about too. In no, the, so like between episode three and four, it's supposed to be twenty years. Sure. And then between one and two, it's ten. And then between two and three, it's like either three or five. I can't. I always forget. So let's say thirty-five years from episode one, to episode four. Yeah. And everything is completely degraded. Like it, everything in episode two is so glossy and so shiny and so fast, and you know everything yeah, is that's, moving. That is definitely an issue. Yeah. And so you, they should have. They should have kept it more practical. They should have kept oh, yeah. it. You know, you can't, it's a weird thing to go back in time and it be nicer than it's going to be. Like, I understand doing things in a better way, more efficiently, but I think Rogue One did a pretty good job at staying more true to what A New Hope was. Yeah, I would say that's prequels. one of the, I would say that's one of the best things about Rogue One, honestly. Like, to me, the the issue with Rogue One is just the characters. <laughs> That's, um, and it's, I find it very boring, yeah. but, um, but yeah, no, it definitely did that well. Um, but, um, yeah, so I don't know. Do, do we want to talk about each prequel movie specifically then? So like what kind of your basic thoughts on each one specifically? Um, I mean the first two are pointless, right? Like, yeah. That's kind of, that was kind of my point of my opening statement was I think definitely. you can cut out. 95% of Phantom Menace. You can cut out probably 70, 80% of, uh, I can't even remember what it's called now. What's the second one called? Attack of, uh, Attack Clone of Wars. Clones. Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones. No, Clone Wars is the show. Is the TV show, yeah. which is actually good. Well, most of the episodes are good. Some are not, but. <laughs> so I, I, th- um, I think you can cut out most of that. Like. Yeah, definitely. Um, See now. The way I see it, though, is you can do it as a trilogy. It's just cut out the pointless stuff and focus more on characters and focus more on telling good stories in each one rather than what they did, which was kind of just like they didn't spend enough time to really get you invested in the characters, which kind of made the, you know, it not as effective. Well, I think the part of what happened was they wanted to focus on Anakin. They wanted this to be Anakin's story from this innocent little kid to this terrible villain. Mm-hmm. But, Which I think isn't, but uh, oh, on paper is a, I think on paper, that's a good idea, but it just wasn't, I don't think wasn't executed very well. Well, so what I was going to say is what they, so that's what they wanted to do. That's what they set out intending to do. But Obi-Wan was the most compelling character, and so they wanted to focus on him more and more, but it was in contrast to their their vision, right? Their intention of what they were doing. Yeah. So there's a lot of, when you're watching it, there's a lot of conflict of just being a viewer of like, oh, well, this is supposed to be Anakin's story, but it definitely seems like you guys like Obi-Wan a lot better. And I think it's a similar yeah. issue with this new current trilogy, is that... Uh, Kylo Ren is the only compelling character, but they're trying yeah, is, to build yeah. these other characters. And it's like, and it's, there's so much conflict. And if they would just say, you know what? Obi-Wan is the compelling character here. This is his trilogy. Kylo Ren is the compelling character here. This is his trilogy. Like, let's just focus on that. Like, you don't need to have Ray and Finn and all these other guys doing all this stuff. Like, no, focus on Kylo and then add them in extra. So what you're saying is like maybe if they had had like Obi-Wan as the main character, then had Anakin as more of just a supporting character. Yeah. Well, the, I think the issue comes in as Ewan McGregor is a better actor than Hayden Christensen. And they, yeah. they gave Ewan McGregor a lot more to do, but because his, the central conflict of the story is Anakin's, it's very, it, it doesn't oh, flow. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. When you, you have like, oh, this is, this is the main character is Obi-Wan because the focus and the attention is kind of put on him. But the story is focusing on Anakin. There's this, this divide. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
Similar, yeah. similar yeah, I, I with the that. new trilogy, where it's like, oh, this is Ray's story, but you're you're distracted by Kylo because he's so much more interesting. Yeah, I can, I get that definitely. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, I don't know. I think. So I think ta- yeah, the best yeah. way to talk about it is just <laughs> to talk about all three at once. I don't, I don't think we need to go into each individual one. I think okay. 95% of the first two are pointless. The third one mm-hmm. I think is the best out of the three. And I think that's only definitely. because once Anakin shifts, it, the movie becomes what it was intended to be. Yeah. Although I do like the rest of the episode three before Anakin shifts because I like kind of the slow build up to it. I don't know. Yeah. No, I think, I think episode just, I, three is, is, is a decent movie. It's probably one of my, yeah, one of the top Star Wars movies. Honestly, for me. episode three is my third favorite probably. Yeah. Out of all of them. Uh, obviously, Empire is my favorite, and then, uh, then A New Hope, and then, um, episode three. Then, yeah. Um, and then one and two, episode one and two are definitely at the bottom of the entire thing, of yeah. the entire, I, my overall Star Wars rating list. One and two are definitely at the bottom. Um, but, well, um, do yeah. you, do you think, Star Wars is better off with or without the prequel trilogy. I mean, I like that the prequel trilogy exists. I don't know. It to like first off, it it adds, I don't know. I I like adding co- more context to the story. I don't know why. It's just and again, this could be just this is the way I've always thought of it and so it's just normal for me, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I never lived in a world where there was no prequels. Yeah. I mean, cuz like by the time I first watched Star Wars, all of the prequels had already come out. So I already like I knew that there was six movies and so I I it was it's always been there. So it's kind of difficult for me to kind of think of it otherwise. Yeah. So I don't know. See, I went, I went to the theater to see Phantom Menace with my grandpa. Uh, and I was like 12, which yeah. should have been like the sweet spot for me enjoying it. And I, I just remember being kind of bored. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Phantom Menace was probably the most boring of them. Cause like episode two, I actually just like, I, it is a terrible movie, but I actually find enjoyment out of it. First off, I enjoy the terrible romance between Anakin and Padme. I just love laughing at it. Yeah. Um, and also, also, I think there are some fun, a few fun scenes in it that I just, I don't know, like, but overall it is, it isn't, it isn't a good movie. But, um, and then, um, also I remember when I first watched, now I think episode two is a good movie for like, young boys because like i remember when i first watched episode two i loved it because i loved like the action scenes in it but like obviously now i you know think it's dumb but like i think as a kid though i think you can appreciate like episode two a lot more well yeah and again i think that's that's the thing right star wars is a kid's thing it's Mm -hmm. i I think it's made for kids but people want to hold it up to a higher standard i mean i always saw it at least the originals I always saw as more of like family movies, less of just for kids, also kind of family movies more. Sure. But I, would, I, I, would I think even family movies, yeah. kids movies, that's all a different, it's all a different thing, right? It's, it's not, it, it's the, you can critique anything. You can criticize anything, right? That's, that's, I'm not saying that, Yeah, but Definitely. There's a different lens you have to look at this stuff when you're looking at a kids movie. Like, I don't, like, if I go and watch Despicable Me with my kids and I don't enjoy it, I don't go, oh, this is a bad movie. And I just think, oh, this isn't really for me. This is made for them. Yeah. And that's how I see Star Wars. I'm like, oh, this isn't really aimed at me. Like, this is, this isn't really, I'm not the demographic for this. And so yeah. it, it not being interesting is okay because it's not really meant for me. Mm-hmm. 
Like yeah, if, if yeah, I hate, I if I hate that. chocolate, right. And I have a piece of chocolate cake, it's not because the cake is bad that I hate it. It's just like, Oh no, I don't, I, this is not my taste. Yeah, that, that's true. I think in the end, it probably does all come down to taste. Um, and you know, the type of movies that Star Wars are just isn't really your taste, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, cause I mean, okay. So like, I don't know, just, just for like context, what are like, movies that the type of movies that you really like the type of movies that are like your favorite movies all right so my favorite (laughs) my favorite movie of like all time but it's just purely on nostalgia at this point like is probably terminator 2 it's probably one of my favorites one that i've seen the most uh i've actually never seen the terminator movies uh to be honest the second (laughs) one is the best the first i know everyone says that yeah the first one uh, it's okay. It's not super great. The second one's much better. The third and the fourth are kind of pointless. And the fifth is cool because it's got all these callbacks to the first one, but it's not great. Not great. No. Um, then Fight Club. Fight Club is another one of my favorite okay. movies. I love Fight Club is definitely one of my all time favorites. I watched that for the first time last summer. And I've watched it probably four times now, mm. and I love that movie so much. <laughs> no, it's. Um, it, I think it's really good. I think it's it's really well done. I think I, it's, yeah. it's just kind of realistic and dark and gritty, even though there is, you know, mental health issues going on that, you know, make it so it's not quite realistic. And if you really start questioning it, like, well, why are these other people – uh, encouraging this crazy person like that would never happen but and spoiler alert uh why does he how does he not die after shooting himself in the head like that yeah well in the movie he shoots himself through the mouth <laughs> yeah i know but like the way he did it it was like it seems like he should have killed him yeah or he should have been sent to an er immediately <laughs> 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 but um yeah no i do love that movie um, and then, but anyways, uh, other movies, other movies that I like I'm trying to think, I like, it's all different, right? Like there's, there's kind of genre based movies yeah. and I like movies based on the concepts more than the actual, uh, execution of the movie. Like I think the purge could have been a great movie, uh, and they just kind of dropped the ball with, but I still enjoy it. Like I still am invested into knowing what happens because I think there's such a cool concept there, but yeah, the movies are I've terrible. Seen, I've seen the third purge movie and okay. it was some parts of it were somewhat entertaining, but overall it wasn't that great. Yeah. Uh, like the first <laughs> saw movie I think is pretty good. It's, you know, an indie movie at the time. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, for, I guess that's, that's like what that's, more horror, right? That's yeah. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I I haven't seen it. I'm I don't know. Like I've never been a huge horror person. Like when I watch a good horror movie, I like it in terms of like I'll watch it and be like, that was did that was a well made movie. But I'm never like, wow, I loved that movie. I don't know. Like because like I watched the original Alien right for the first time and yeah. like I know a lot of people say that's one of the best horror movies and I, I liked the movie but I didn't love it like so many people do just because I don't know like I just have never been hugely into the horror genre uh-huh. but um <clears throat> but like I was able to look at it and go oh I appreciate how well crafted the movie is well that's and, a similar it's a similar thing to why people love the original Star Wars is why they love Alien is because it was so new and so fresh when it came out yeah. and now it's been overplayed now it's all the elements have been reused and rehashed in so many different things that it's just not quite as interesting anymore yeah that that is probably part of the reason why I didn't appreciate it as well I mean I appreciated it but it was like I didn't enjoy it as much as maybe I would have if I had watched it when it like if I was around when it first came out. Yeah. Um, Another movie yeah. I really like is The Way Way Back. I don't know if you've seen that. It's a pretty good one. The Raid. What is it? The Way Way Back. Uh, um, no, I, I actually don't even know if I've heard of that. Yeah, it's good. I think that one's the definitely way. worth checking out. 
Okay. It's uh, about this uh, kid who goes, they go away for the summer and he gets a job at a, um, uh, an amusement park, a water amusement park. What is that called? Why can't I think of the name of that? A water park? <laughs> Water park? Yeah. Yeah, a water park. Um, he gets a job in a water park and it's just kind of his summer living out there. I think that's really good. Mm-hmm. The raid, the okay, raid yeah. two, those are great. Like, I like movies. I've heard, I've heard that the raid, the two raid movies are, were really good action movies. They heard a lot about, a lot of good things about Did them. you watch, uh, uh, Daredevil season one on Netflix? I saw like the first like six episodes, but, I just never found the time to to continue watching. I really enjoyed it, but I just didn't have the time to continue. You know the hallway fight scene that he does? Yeah. Where yeah. The, the camera's locked yeah. off and it's, you know, just going back and forth throughout the rooms and all that stuff. There's not yeah. it's not quick cuts and stuff like that. So the raid is basically like that through the whole movie. It's w- much better than that, but it's but better. Yeah. It's like a similar type of thing but better. Yeah, you get, through the whole movie. You can actually see what's happening. The story is kind of strange, and it's uh Indonesian film, so it's all subtitles yeah. and stuff like that. But yeah, 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 I know it's I great. Know. You know, definitely worth watching. But yeah, so Star Wars, not really. It doesn't really go with my taste. I don't. I don't mind. I don't mind there being magic or mystical stuff. That doesn't bother me. But it has to feel earned, and Star Wars never quite felt earned. Okay. So is it okay. So what what are your overall thoughts on like the fantasy genre in general? Cuz I guess Star Wars people consider more fantasy than they do sci-fi. So like what are your thoughts on like that kind of like fantasy genre in general? Like give me another one to compare it to. Um I mean I guess the most f- famous fantasy genre movie. Well, I mean I guess technically Star Wars would be more famous, but um most famous for being just straight up uh, fantasy would be probably Lord of the Rings, I guess. Yeah. I'll go with that. I think the Lord of the Rings is better than Star Wars. I think they do a better job at world building and uh, exploring the world than Star Wars. Definitely so, definitely with that. Definitely world building is better than that. Star Wars just throws things in your face. They're like, oh, this is a thing now. Get used to it. Like That's kind of the issue with the world hopping is – they just go to a new world and now you're surrounded by all this new stuff that you have to accept where Lord of the Rings is, it's gradually building on top of everything else that they've established. Um, I mean, I've always felt that in star Wars, it, it does it fairly gradually. Cause like it lets you take time on like, let's say the planet of Tatooine before you move on to something else. I don't know. Well, the, maybe that's just me. I, I don't know. I, I think I disagree with that. I think, I, you know, especially when you're talking the Gungan, the Naboo or whatever it is. Okay, okay. The prequels did not do as good of a job with that. Definitely. Yeah. No, they, it was uh, pretty bad. Like again, they, again, like I said, the prequels are not. I don't like them as much as the the uh, original trilogy. Well, except for I do like Episode Three better than Episode Six. Other than that, I like the original trilogy better than the prequels. Well, Episode Three. <laughs> Episode three's focus is cutting away all the extra stuff that they added in the first two movies. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's going back to what they, you know, the episode one or Phantom Menace is how Anakin and Obi-Wan became, you know, how their relationship started. Episode three is how it ended and everything in between that was just all filler. So like, if you look at it as an arc, they're adding, 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 and then they're like, all right, we gotta start stripping this away and getting back to where we started. And it's just, yeah. that's why episode three, I think, works so much better is because. Oh yeah, it definitely is better. Yes. It, it <laughs> trims out all the fat and gets really laser focused to the end. And I think the end of episode three. Yes. Is probably one of the better moments in all of Star Wars. Oh, definitely. One of my favorite moments is like the end when, of the end of like the battle between Anakin and Obi Wan, and he went that moment when he's there. Like, I don't know. I just, I always just found this very emotional moment. Like, he's like, "You were my brother, Anakin," and all that. Like, again, that's another. Really Ewan like McGregor moment. was yeah. did a great was, job. Which is why, if they do an Obi Wan movie, which they, there's there's a high chance that they will, 
everyone wants them to get Ewan McGregor back to play play him. Yeah, which I would be down for because I I, I just don't know. I don't see how they can do it. <laughs> uh, any like from where they left off. From- see, I think they c- could do something good with it, depending on who the directors and writers to direct. Depending on who the director is and who the writer is, they could do something really good with it. The the problem is, you go from Anakin to Luke in the the storyline of the movies, right? So from mm-hmm. so you got Obi Wan leaving Anakin and picking up with Luke, and basically the whole his whole life, according to um, uh, New Hope, has just kind of been living out in on Tatooine, kind of as a hermit, as a crazy person. Yes. So but I think it, there could be an interesting smaller scale story so, told just on Tatooine. I think there could be so that's what, focused more on. Oh, so when you add in, when you do this next movie, it's going to feel very ham-fisted. It's going to feel very forced because you, your, your boundaries are so limited from him leaving Anakin to him coming to Luke of what you're able to do. Like, sure, there's, you know, 20 years or whatever. So I, I guess stuff can fit in, but the <laughs> Jedis are basically destroyed at the end of episode three. There's right. no mention of them really throughout Rogue One. And, you know, there's, it just doesn't seem like enough room to where it doesn't feel like it's going to be so forced. I mean, I think, I don't know. I feel like there could be like a good smaller scale story that takes place only on Tatooine that gets more into the character of Obi-Wan, like how, like how he reacts, like, him kind of dealing with, you know, like, like if you think about it, Obi-Wan probably has some sort of emotional trauma due to, you know, his best friend turned against him and killed the entire Jedi order. And like, that's got to cause some sort of mental trauma almost, or like not, not mental trauma. I mean, like some sort of, he's got to be somewhat emotionally guard not in a way but Uh like so maybe um, it could be a movie about him overcoming that That, so it could be kind of that could be uh, interesting but there's no way that's what they're gonna do yeah see that's what's gonna happen is he's gonna be on Tatooine hiding and someone's gonna show up and be like hey we need your help and he's like no i'm i'm done with that they're like no really we need your help he's like they i i don't want to do that anymore they're like no really really we need your help And he's like, all right, I'll help you this one time. Here's the thing. The guy, I forget his name. The guy that was rumored to be directing the, to end up, that they were thinking about getting to direct the Obi-Wan movie. I guess, I forget his name, but I guess he's known for directing really good, like, dramas. So if you get, again, like I said before, if you get the right director and the right writer to do it, you could do something like that yeah. and, and it could work out really well like the trailer for solo looks so boring yeah it, it solo looks like and that it'll have some cool action maybe some fun moments but like overall just not it, it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't i like i don't even want to see it it looks so bad yeah and that's I'm what going they're going to gonna... see it so yeah, I, I, I don't think Solo is going to be very good, and I think Obi-Wan, or an Obi story, is going to suffer in a similar way. That mm-hmm. they're just trying to fit in all the stuff that they're constricted to do. Like when you, yeah. when you give yourself such small parameters with an established character and an established world, it's really hard to do something interesting and cool inside of that. Yeah. If you don't yeah. have an open-ended, you know, like, the you don't have an open direction where you can take it. Like if you have to start in one place and end in another place, all the stuff in the middle yeah. is pretty much pointless. The, I mean, this is why I think so back to like the OB one idea, which I think has potential because again, like I think there could be some interesting kind of character change that goes through it, which kind of takes you from, the Obi-Wan who's kind of emotionally traumatized from what happened at the end of episode three takes you from that Obi-Wan to the wise old Obi-Wan that you know in episode four kind of has that character change that gets you 
from that, which I think could be an interesting thing. The only issue is, again, yeah, there is is a small chance that they would actually go for something like that. Yeah, no, I, I'd highly, I'd be highly doubtful that Disney would be willing to go for a small scale Disney, uh, Star Wars story. Yeah. Um, although based on the director who they supposedly were thinking about getting to direct it, maybe just because that's kind of more his thing, I mm-hmm. think. Like, I guess he's more of a drama director. Um, which was, would actually be a really good idea. I actually did videos on this a while ago where I did, two, I, I did, where I was talking about what I would want to see from an Obi-Wan movie, basically. Um, and that was around the time when they first, uh, it first leaked that they were thinking about getting him, oh, I forget his name. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen any movies. But I've heard that he's a really good drama director. But when they first said that, that that was who they were thinking about getting to direct, one of the things I said in there was, yes, get a good, somebody who's good at getting like small scale dramas. Get somebody who's good at that to direct it. Yeah. Cause that's what we need from that movie. Well, I don't even, um, th- I don't, I don't think we need that movie. I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, but here's the thing though is you don't need any movie. I mean, it's more, to me, it's like, okay, you can take a movie that's the most pointless movie ever and make it a really good movie. And that's what I'm saying is like, if they're going to make the movie anyways, this is what I would want it to be. So I don't know. Yeah. So but I, I my point is, I think you McGregor did a great job in the prequels and he's the standout of that. If he comes yeah. back and makes a subpar movie, it's going to ruin even that much. Well, I mean, he already made three subpar movies. Well, two below subpar. One that's all right for. I mean, he was good in them, but like. <laughs> but that's what I no, mean. Like, if yeah. he if he comes yeah. back and has a standalone movie that is already yeah. so constricted and going to be such a difficult thing to land, it's like, man, that's. I would not even. I, I'd rather them just not make it. Like. I can see that. I think. Again, I'm kind of like conflicted on that because, like, like I think if it's done right, I don't know. I would, I would rather see, then, yeah. I would rather see new movies in the like that are in the present story or the timeline of new characters that just continue to build the world out instead of going back yeah. and rehashing old characters and old stories. Like, oh yeah, either, yeah, yeah, either go that, way, which... way back to the beginning of the Jedi. That's that's the only story that I'm interested in seeing from the past is how the Jedi started. Other than that, okay, yeah, exactly. I don't care at all about anything that's happened prior to any of the movies yeah. that are out right now. Now I do have to say, yeah, I definitely agree. Now we'll have to wait and see what, um, cause there is a trilogy planned that Ryan Johnson is going to direct that apparently has nothing to do with any of the main stories or yeah. any of the main characters, mm-hmm. which is good. Because it means it's, you know, doing something completely different. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see what that ends up being. I'm interested. They've announced it. They didn't announce what the stories were going to be, but, um, well, the, people are like, the one benefit with that is you can go anywhere you want, right? Yeah. Like Rogue again, One they, had a definite ending. The prequels had a definite ending. Like you knew it. Yeah. You knew the yeah. direction they were all yeah. going. And so it really deflates the stakes. But at least when you have open-ended possibilities for where you can take your movie, it's a lot more, it's a lot easier to get excited for. Oh yeah, that, that, I definitely agree. Cause then it's like, you're not like, you're, you never know how it's going to end. Cause like, you know, I, I do like episode three, but like, I know how it was going to end, you know, when I first yeah. saw it. Cause it was like, you know, oh, he's going to be Darth Vader. Uh, he's, you know, whatever, you know, like I knew, well, that's what oh, makes Leia, Luke are going to be born. You know, I knew all that stuff and like Luke's going to be taken to Tatooine. Leia's going to be taken to Alderaan. You know, I knew all that, you know, that's what makes <laughs> Kylo's character so interesting is you really don't, you don't know. know where he's going to go. Yeah. And I, I yeah, think Kylo- what this trilogy, this current trilogy is all about is turning Kylo into the biggest Star Wars villain that there's ever been. And that it's going to end with him kind of, you know, fulfilling that destiny. 
and the next one be about the universe having to take him on. I don't that, think see, I don't that, think Kylo is that. yeah. I don't think Kylo's story is going to end in the next movie. Like I think a lot of people feel like it, you know yeah. each each trilogy seems to have kind of a villainous arc. Like oh this guy is a villain and gets taken out. I think it's going to be similar to um, the uh, well who was Anakin's master the bad one in the prequels. You mean um, the uh, the Emperor. Palpatine? Yeah, yeah. So I think this this trilogy is kind of ha- him as in the Senate, and then the next trilogy is going to be him as an Emperor. But you know, similar yeah. arc. Has it been confirmed that they're going to do episode 10, 11, 12, though? I, I don't know if Have it's they, been confirmed, but I'm sure see, they're I don't going know to. if they're going to do that. I mean, if they do, I think they should do, like, what they did before, like, wait a while to do it, you know? Like, in between each main Star Wars trilogy, they should wait a while, because, like... The, I, I think they're trying to do that. But you can tell they're trying to milk it for everything it's worth by putting in Rogue One and putting in Solo and putting in Obi Wan. Like they're like, oh no, we're we're waiting a while for the the main story. Oh yeah, but uh, yeah, it doesn't work if you're filling it with all this other stuff. They're they're Mm -hmm. they're gonna be there's I would almost guarantee there's gonna be at least a Star Wars movie coming out every year, if not every other year, for a long time. Well, so far it's been every year. Yeah. Um, and it, well, it will be every year until, at least until, probably at least until whatever the next Star Wars story is, because it's going to be Solo, and then it's going to be Episode Nine, and then it's going to be whatever the next Star Wars story is, which will most likely end up being Obi Wan. It, I don't think it's been confirmed yet, but. And then after that, it, there, I don't think there's any plans for what's coming after that necessarily, but, you know, then it might be J- Ryan Johnson's trilogy after that. Yeah. And, and it, one, one of those every year. And then it might be more Star Wars stories. And then it might be the next trilogy. You never know how long it's going to go. That's true. Yeah. There's, there's going to be enough Star Wars to go around for a very long time. <laughs> yes. A lot. Some of it will probably be good. Some of it not so good. I think it's going to degrade consistently. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think it's going to depend on each individual film, depending on who's making it, who's working on it. Cause I mean, I don't know. I think Disney, I think Disney's the problem. I think Disney has this, this gloss that they put to their movies. Like you look at the Marvel yes. movies, you look at Star Wars movies, you just, they're all, it's just all getting kind of played out. Like it's like too much. Of, yeah. There's this, there's this thing about the Disney stuff that just doesn't work. And it, it, when you have too much of it, yeah. you, you start feeling not very happy about it. Is, yeah. I think the best Disney movies have, it are always the ones, cause there have been in the past, the ones that really did something different and really, cause Disney has made many, many great movies, obviously. Um, but, um, yeah. Yeah, but not recently. I don't know. Yeah, like recently they've made good movies, but not great movies. Yeah, yeah, I, w- I would say that. Yeah. Um. Well, like people, I think. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think let's. Uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Yeah, we've kind of strayed away from talking about <laughs> the prequels. That's what it was. So I think we can both agree. Prequels are bad. Episode one and sh- episode one and two are pointless and stupid. Episode three is at least somewhat good. Yeah, has some good things going for it. Just you know, there are some things not so good about it, but overall, it's a fairly good movie. Yep, that's basically. So basically, we pretty much agree completely on the prequels. I think for the most part, because like uh, for the, the original part. trilogy, I don't think it needs trilogy, to be three movies. I think well, it's a, okay. Other than that, I think it could be if it was done better. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, but that that that's a non-statement, really. That's true. That is true. <laughs> it, anything, is, any, it could be ten movies if it was done better. If they were all, if they were done well, that is that is true. Yeah, if you, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so tell me about your YouTube channel again. Uh, my YouTube channel is Nim TV. 
N I M T V. That is what it is. I do, uh, mostly movie reviews. Well, currently it's kind of a mix of movie reviews and Star Wars The Clone Wars reviews, which is where I review every single episode of Star Wars The Clone Wars. I think I mentioned that in this video or in the other video we did. I don't know. Uh, but, um, that series is going to end, then it'll mostly just be movie reviews and movie related things in general. I might do, uh, venture and other things. And I do try to every once in a while make my own short films because I'm, an aspiring filmmaker myself. I have one currently, um, and then I'm working on another one. So, cool. Uh, yeah. You can also find me on Twitter at, what is it? Nim. I think it's, I don't even remember what my Twitter handle is. It's like Nim underscore craft, I think. I don't know, because it was my old one from when I was a Minecraft YouTuber. <laughs> and, uh, you can find us on Twitter at I seen that pod. <laughs> 